Hey, you guys. Yes, this, this is the same day. If you watched my last video, this is the same day as the last video. But we're going to be getting into things I wish I knew before I became a flight attendant. So, first thing I wish I knew before becoming a flight attendant is how it can impact your health. Now, going up, sometimes, I think like the highest is like 40,000 feet to being like at like ground level, up and down, sometimes four or five times a day and doing it again the next day can impact your health. Now, when I started, when I first started flying, it was getting cold and I'm based, I was based in a predominantly cold state. I was based in Minneapolis, Minnesota and it's cold there during the winter. Now, a lot of, you'll get, you'll start to like, it's not like a sick, I call it airplane sickness. It's like almost like feeling all that cold air on you, especially if you're the forward flight attendant, which is the one in the front who opens the main cabin door for all the passengers to come in. You feel a lot of cold air if you're based in a cold place or just going up and down, it can mess with your congestion. So always taking vitamins and keeping like certain little medicines on you can help counteract with that. Uh, another thing I wish I knew before becoming a flight attendant is the schedule. Now, I'm on reserve, which is what a lot of new flight attendants might be on. I have a.m. reserve, so it's from 4 a.m. to 4 p.m. And it does affect your sleeping schedule. I find that I wake up at 4 a.m. every day. Sometimes I don't even, like, sleep until I know I'm off or unless I'm at the hotel. And especially with, like, certain schedules when you are working, like, stand-ups, which is the last flight in, first flight out. And you have only, like, a small window, maybe, like, four or five hours to sleep in between. It can affect your sleep. So, another thing to counteract with that is, you know, a lot of people take melatonin. What I do is I just keep something with me when I'm working that helps me get comfortable in the hotel. So, when I do have to like sleep on command I can or I sleep when I know I'm off uh so the third thing I wish I knew before becoming a flight attendant is you don't choose your base out of training you can put together a list a lot of companies will ask you like which one do you want first and second third fourth fifth sixth and so on um but it's ultimately up to them where you get based out of training sorry my airline's you can switch bases every month. I know, I think Delta does it every three months. So keep in mind when you're going through the process and you're applying for these airlines, look up and research or go on YouTube and see like how often can you change bases at this specific airline that you want. Because a lot of times, sometimes you're not going to get based at home right out of training. Like I'm based at home now. Like I just got it, but it's like my second month third month second or third month flying so it's not impossible to get your base out of training it's just you have to keep in mind that there's a chance that you won't and you have to be prepared for that so fourth thing i wish i knew before becoming a flight attendant is that a lot of people won't understand your job a lot of people don't like unless you've gone through training or you're in training or you've done a lot of research or you have family that are flight attendants or like captains or anyone in your family works in the aviation industry you won't understand what reserve is you won't fully understand like the scheduling process um you won't understand that sometimes we don't exactly know where we're gonna be in a couple like in the next week like we're just on reserve we could have we can get a trip picked up and now we're in washington so there is a lot of things like you move around a lot you move around a lot and a lot of people aren't going to understand it. But, I mean, of course, explaining it to them could, you know, easily fix that. But a lot of people won't get your schedule. They won't get why you're asleep or tired. And they won't understand um, the benefits process, like how, it, how getting flight benefits works. Fifth thing and the last thing I wish I knew before becoming a flight attendant. And it's not like in order of importance, but this is also a good one is really just 
understanding your body's time clock. Like, when you're switching time zones a lot, it can... Like, your body... Like, it could be 6 in the morning. And your body can feel like it's late at night. Which is another health aspect, I believe. But... Of course, I don't think there's nothing you can really do to, like, counteract that. But just get used to it. Um... And I'm gonna throw in a bonus one scheduling. Like, I think all airlines use PBS as a for bidding for your schedule because we have a monthly schedule, not a weekly schedule, it's a monthly schedule. And you can bid, I believe I got seven liters at my airlines. You can bid for like what days you want off and what um, your scheduling preference. Ultimately, it is up to them. Um, what you get scheduled for, your reserve time, a.m. or p.m., if you're on reserve or not. Um, and the process of switching from reserve to having a line, it is a big difference from any other job where you can just say, hey, or if, especially if you have like a weekly, if you get paid every week, or you can, or they do the schedule like every week, um, it is a big switch because your month is laid out for you and you technically you can bid for it um and they can just pick which layer to give you but ultimately it is up to them and the company's needs based on what you have and that's a big switch for a lot of people especially people with kids people who have people who depend on them and people with like certain health issues that have to have to have certain days off for appointments and things of that nature so it is a big switch. So that is something to keep in mind that like, even if you don't have any of those things, like for me, it was like hair appointments. Like you can't really book a hair appointment until you know your schedule for the month. And then you have to figure out like you have to have enough days in between because I don't never schedule. I would never schedule getting my hair done on a day that I'm on reserve. So I do it on my off days. And then so it's like scheduling appointments or planning things to do have to be done after you get your monthly schedule so that is a big switch but uh thank you for joining me on this video uh come in any other sit down talk videos you guys want me to do but these are things that i wish i knew before becoming a flight attendant hopefully this gets you prepared for whichever process part of the process you're in or if you're thinking about becoming a flight attendant just always keep these things in mind when Thinking about the job, you know, making sure that it is a good fit for you or something you can work out in your schedule. But thank you.